you are looking at yet another anti-Israel demonstration taking place right now in New York City. Let's listen in. Today's demonstration comes as we learn more about the crackdown on anti-Israel protesters at Columbia University yesterday. Over 100 people were charged with trespassing, and two were also charged with obstructing government administration. Several students involved in the protest were also suspended. Here they are calling Intifada, or the violence against Jews, the, quote, only solution while they're being arrested. Prior to being taken into custody, they also called the police that were protecting the campus at the time Ku Klux Klan members. But it doesn't stop at chants or vile comments. These private school kids are openly supporting Islamic Republic-backed Hamas terrorists, and they have a message for anyone who gets in their way. Yes, we're all Hamas, If they are Hamas Dagan, that means they are rapist, butchering terrorists who I don't think deserve to be on this planet. But to them, it seems like some sort of game. Yep. Not the first time that we've heard that, actually. It was right after October 7th. There was a, do you want to call them protesters, at University of North Carolina Chapel Hill who said the same thing, who was screaming, show us your face. Every one of you, show us your face. Why are you hiding your anti-Israel, anti-Semitic, pro-terrorist, anti-American face? Because if you manage to graduate from one of these colleges, you're worried about getting a job. That's what's afoot. And your parents are worried about you winding up living with them forever in their basement, because that's where you're going. I, it's finally good that we're seeing backlash, so arrests, suspensions. Google fired 28 people involved in the protest um, in New York and in their California offices. And I just, this is just hilarious, that there was one Barnard student who was arrested and suspended who went on X to whine about being kicked out of student housing at 2 o'clock in the morning that she was complaining that she had to wait outside the Barnard Gates for a whole hour, and she only had 15 minutes to collect her belongings. More of this, please, and more not just suspensions, but expulsions of these pro-terrorist, threatening individuals. Now, a Columbia University spokesperson has provided a statement to Fox News on the protests, which are continuing today at the university. That statement reads, quote, while the encampment, encampment has been dismantled, our community has had protest activity on campus this October, and we expect that activity to continue. We have rules regarding the time, place, and manner that apply to protest activity, and will continue to enforce those. We remain in regular contact with our students and student groups and are committed to ensuring the core functions of the university continue. Kaylee, interestingly, when students thus break that policy and they have accountability that occurs, suspension, arrest for breaking the law, et cetera, I guess, depending on who your mom is, you get called that that's, quote, political reprisal. Because the daughter of Ilhan Omar enjoyed a suspension from Barnard earlier for, as she says, standing in solidarity with Palestinians against a genocide, but probably it was breaking school policy. And then now, after being, after having accountability occur with what she was doing on Columbia U University, Democrat lawmakers on our dime are weighing in and saying it's political. It is not. They are breaking the law. That's right. what these people are doing. Right. You have a First Amendment right to say what you want to say but you don't have a First Amendment right to a spot at Barnard College. You don't have a First Amendment right to a cushy job at a law firm or finance position thereafter. And a lot of these students think that they do. Remember when all the Harvard student groups came out and essentially blamed Israel for the attack, that terrorist attack by Hamas? Well, all of a sudden you had billionaires coming out and some companies saying, look, we're not going to hire these people. And all of a sudden, people were rushing to get their signatures off of those letters. There has to be consequences for these actions. When these student groups, and Ilhan Omar, I would just say, she suggested that the chants being used at some of these protests were not anti-Jewish. Well, Intifada 
and we will all honor the martyrs, which is some of the chants we have heard in the waning days since October 7th from Columbia University students. Those are anti-Jewish, they're anti-Semitic, and there must be consequences for these actions. And Harris, what a striking contrast, a, a, a disgusting contrast to have these students who are complaining about not being able to get their clothes. Well, we saw clothes that were saturated in blood yeah. in areas after brutal butchering rapes had occurred at the hands of Hamas. And these people are enjoying the luxuries afforded them by this country, including spouting off and calling police terrible names and getting their great education. The education that they're getting apparently is to act whimsically while there are people who face this life and death scenario continuously at the hands of Hamas and those that will never see the light of day again. Yeah, women who were raped in such a way that their pelvises broke, they turned them over and raped them in a different direction. Uh, the GoPro video is hard to watch. So, Isra Hirsi, let's say her name, she is the daughter of Elon Omar. She's an adult. We can recognize her. We can, we can say her name. Um, these are not women who are for women, for all the reasons that we just mm. mentioned. These are not women who are for feeding the Palestinians, who they say are close to a famine, and are. Yeah, that's not what their role is in all of this. They're not, they're not interested in going and helping and pooling together resources to help those people on the ground in Gaza. No, they want to show their hate for this country. And now we have a legacy of hate in young Isra Hirsi. Mm. Just like her mother and her anti-Semitic things that get her censured in Congress, this young woman gets thrown out of college. Mm. We have a legacy of hate of Jews. And make no mistake about it, it won't stop there. If you hate one, you hate some. And we just heard on live TV a chant that I don't want to repeat on air that means the extermination of the Jewish people. That's happening right now on Columbia University's campus in New York City. Emily, as a Jewish person who grew up in New York City and went to an Ivy League university, I experienced none of this. This is a paradigm shift. This is anti-American, to Harris's point, not just anti-Israel. At a time when Israel is under attack, this is now propagating across Ivy League universities and, and to Dagan's point, other universities that are not Ivy League. And it's not provoked. So it's, so it's not based on free speech. And it's full of violence and hatred. I want to give one shout out to New York University, which opened an anti-Semitism center to actually combat this, to study this, and to shine a spotlight on it. That's what all of these universities should have, an anti-Semitism center to fight back against this. Well, if, one of, if, if I had a kid who was participating in this right now, and I was a parent of them, if I was Ilhan Omar, I would be ashamed. Well, she won't be. She's done the same or worse. Yep, like mother, like daughter.